Thank you very much, Mrs. Huerta. If I can have those with the Tourism Industry Appreciation Month, please come forward. Tourism Industry Appreciation Month. Tourism within our area provides significant economic benefits. Directly or indirectly, it supports nearly 29,000 local jobs and contributes 45 million in local and state taxes. Corpus Christi remains one of the most popular tourist destinations in Texas. May I repeat that? Corpus Christi remains one of the most popular tourist destinations in Corpus Christi, Texas. Annually, it is estimated that a total of 8.1 million visitors spend over 19 million days in the area, injecting over 1.2 billion into the Corpus Christi economy. I love to say that billion word. I like billion. <laughs> yeah. a, growing, a growing share of tourist activities in Corpus Christi is related to nature tourism, accounting for 47% of visitor trips to the area, substantially higher than the state average of 14% in contributing an economic impact of over 986 million. Meetings, signature events, and incentive travel are core business functions that help companies to strengthen business relationships, align and educate employees and customers, and reward business performance. Now, therefore, pursuant to the powers vested, and me as your mayor of the city of Corpus Christi, I do hereby humbly proclaim May 2015, Corpus Christi Tourism Industry Appreciation Month in Corpus Christi, Texas, and urge all citizens to recognize the unique significance of the travel and tourism industry in the lives of the city of Corpus Christi, Texas. Well done. Thank you, Mayor. Um, our tourism luncheon, luncheon is next Wednesday, May 20th. We will have an amazing speaker. We will have one of our world-famous videos that will highlight all the reasons that people come to Corpus Christi, Texas, and we will be giving our Spirit of Hospitality Award. So I hope everybody will be there and join us for the festivities. Hi, Elvi Aguilar, Director of Brand Management for the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Heidi Havda, Director of Special Events and Social Media, and hopefully Film Commissioner soon. Jim Salamenta, uh, General Manager for the American Bank Center. Thank you. Keep up the wonderful work. Can you stay right here? Okay. Can I ask Mr. Meyer and your other team members to please come up here? And if I can ask our um, Chief Shower and um, Chief Alanis, did I just promote you, Commander? Yeah. And if I can ask uh, Pat, uh, Pat Eldridge to please come up front. It's very rare that Officer Pace will open up that door, Chief. <laughs> Uh, if you can come right next door to me, uh, Chief Shower, I'd appreciate it. Um, our uh, city certainly experienced uh, a tragic loss, and thank you for your beautiful prayer, Pastor Axel, with our beloved uh, Chief Lloyd Simpson. And I will tell you that uh, many hearts hurting on the dais um, and our wonderful police force, city employees, all the city. And the outpouring of love and support uh, said two things. It said how much he earned the respect, this giant of a man, of all of you, and how you came out to show your respect and how you honored him so beautifully. But yes, we know that his character and his leadership and his love of what he did and his strong faith certainly was a catalyst of uh, this outpouring support. But I think the other thing was what this also said about our city. 
what this said about the people that have the namesake of Corpus Christi, that means the body of Christ. You truly came out with the most loving and supportive spirit, and it's also reflective of the beautiful and caring and wonderful people that we have that live here in the city of Corpus Christi. And on a, a very short amount of time, it was amazing, of such a beautiful service that was put together, and I don't think that could have ever happened if we would not have had the generosity of so many, but the generosity and the time and the planning of Jim Salamenta and his team with the American Bank Center. Could you please give him a round of applause? <laughs> but also with our leadership in our police, with Commander Alanis and with Chief Shower and uh, Chief Markle would have loved to have been here, but he's at the services today in Dallas with our city manager and our police chief, Rocha, for um, our police chief, Simpson. And uh, I would like for him to read a letter from um, Chief Markle. This is from uh, uh, Interim Chief Markle to all the police staff. To all, just over a week ago, our department lost its leader with the death of Chief Simpson. Never before in its recent history has our department lost an active chief of police. While still in shock at the loss of Chief Simpson, the Administration Bureau, led by Assistant Chief uh, Mark Gutierrez, Commander Mike Alanis, Commander John Houston, and Tom Brown, began preparations for what would be one of the largest memorials ever attended, not only for the department, but also for the city. The planning and execution for such a large memorial was not going to be an easy task, but right away the meetings began. Without reservation, Jim Salamantea, uh, Eric Jeremiah, Dara Meadows from the uh, shape, and then for the reason internally, but externally began to grow. As expertise in other areas was needed, those experts were called in to assist with traffic control, planning, security, honor guard duties. And the ceremony itself, just to name a few, your staff worked tirelessly, tirelessly and often burned the midnight oil so they could organize a memorial that not only showed the professionalism of our department, but was also fitting for someone that was so well respected of Chief Simpson. Those of you who joined us on Friday can attest to what I say is it was one of the most heartfelt tributes I've ever attended. I wouldn't have expected anything less for Chief Simpson. Without the support of staff, the city, and most importantly, the resources donated, donated by members of the community, it was accomplished. While we have many to thank in our community, and that is forthcoming, I would like to thank every one of you and the officer, staff, and who gave their time to assist in the memorial. And I'd like to especially thank Mayor Nelda Martinez, City Manager Ron Olson and the entire city staff who played a role in the success of this event. We could not have paid tribute to Chief Simpson without their immediate support and what seemed like a never ending list of needed resources. Each of you should be proud of this department and the community you serve as they will be ready should you need them. Thank you very much. And I also know Jim Salamenta from the American Bank Center won't say this, but I, I said, well, this is very generous. And also, it's amazing pulling your staff out, knowing that you have also the other events that you have to plan for. And he says, but Mayor, this to this day and probably moving forward will be the most important event that we have ever planned for. And so with that focus, you honored him well and to our wonderful police leadership, to all of you. God bless you, and I will tell you, he is grinning big up there, uh, up in heaven. So um, all of our council members are gonna wanna congratulate you for a job well done. Yes. Oh, oh, this is beautiful. This is uh, Council Member McGill uh, gave this from Josh Harper. Does not that not depict our beautiful uh, <laughs> chief of police?
That is lovely. And they will want to shake your hand. I just want to say a couple of things. Um, first of all, thanks to, to Council and, and Nelda certainly for acknowledging us. We appreciate it. Um, we've done over 4,000 events, uh, the American Bank Center, since SMG came on board uh, 10 years ago. And just as uh, our mayor just said, uh, there was nothing even that came close to the importance of this one. Our, our business stopped, um, except for our skeleton crew. Uh, answering phones, basically telling everyone, we're, you know, this week we're 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 not on duty. <laughs> we're we're focusing on this uh, this service. Um, I'm blessed with an amazing staff right here. Um, very thankful. A lot of times, or, or most of the time, we work behind the scenes, and that's what we like. Um, but to be acknowledged like this is certainly special. Uh, there are some people that did step up that I'd like to thank. Um, besides the people that were on my staff, a lot of people that donated their time and their services. Um, one was DJ Skip, who, if you were there, uh, put up all that nice blue lighting. Uh, Starsky Leal from Platinum Signs and Wraps, who provided the banners, and I think one of them is probably hanging in your gym right now. <laughs> um, LNF uh, Distributors and, and Nestle for donating over 7,000 waters. Uh, Pat Dunn and the Ice Rays uh, for helping us and donating their time and services. So, um, and there's probably more uh, I'm forgetting or, or, or just forgot to write down. Um, but it, it, it's special thanks. It, it was teamwork, and it wasn't just uh, the people I mentioned. Uh, the biggest was, was the CCPD. Um, when we walked into the office, into uh, the chief's conference room last week, I don't even remember what day it was, um, I, I needed sunglasses. There was so much brass in the room, and we got in there. And so we uh, was determined pretty quick that, you know, everything was going to go great. Uh, the teamwork was there. Um, I want to say to the city, you guys, you, you have a great, um, you have a great police department here. You've got people um, that care. You've got a, a great bunch of guys and girls, and um, I just want to say thank you to you guys um, for being good teamwork uh, team members with us. It's a, it's not always easy. When, you know, concert promoters are a lot harder to deal with than <laughs> CCPD, but you guys were great, and and, uh, <laughs> and so we forget. About Somebody was just complimenting you up at the auditor's office. Yeah, how about that? Okay, we are going to, uh, we just have a small technical uh, issue that we're going to be addressing. And so in about three to four minutes, we will uh, probably 
reboot and uh, get back online. So we're going to take a very small recess. Hang on to your seats. Trust me. I'm going to ask that those here with the older uh, Americans Month, if you can come forward, please. Let's go ahead and come right around here. And we say the uh, Older Americans Month, but I'd like to say that they're just probably the mature and wiser. Lisa, you want to come? Are you the, our spokesperson? OK. Our local population includes, come on in here, sister. Our local population includes a thriving community of older Americans who deserve recognition for their contributions and sacrifice that ensure a better life for future generations. The city of Corpus Christi is committed to helping all individuals live longer, healthier lives in the community of their choice. Since 1965, the Older Americans Act has provided services that help older adults remain healthy and independent through medical and health care support, hospital readmission prevention, and support of basic functions such as bathing or preparing meals. Our community can provide opportunities to enrich the lives of individuals of all ages by promoting and engaging in activity, wellness, and social inclusion, emphasizing home and community-based services that support independent living, ensuring community members of all ages benefit from the contributions and experience of older adults. Now, therefore, pursuant to the powers vested in me as your mayor of the city of Corpus Christi, I do hereby humbly proclaim May, the month of May 2015, as Older and Wiser Americans Month. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mayor. And uh, this is just a representative of some of the members that attend the local senior centers. And in addition to members from the Mayor's Council on Aging that are also joining us today. And as the proclamation has stated, we're uh, celebrating the uh, a 50 plus, and uh, these folks, there you go, we can raise our hands. <laughs> and I'm sure if you visit with any one of the members, they will tell you the many stories and activities that happen at the centers, and, we have, and also the services that we provide to not only the older adults, but also uh, for those in the community, they're, they're also serving as caregivers, and the services that we provide for them as well. Thank you. Council members ready for the pick. There you go. Okay, Elder Abuse Prevention Month. Today. 
And then after, uh, then we're going to have the small business week, and so we can uh, have some predictability and efficiencies of times. And then we're going to have our last uh, recognition, but certainly not least, is uh, National Children's Mental Health Awareness Week. And so as you see the magazine, you can make your way up, and we're so happy that we have this wonderful group of people People who are elderly or have disabilities have contributed to the general welfare of this city by helping to preserve customs, convictions, and traditions from diverse backgrounds. These residents are vital and integral members of our society, and their wisdom and experience has enriched our lives. Abuse of the elderly and also of the people with disabilities in domestic and institutional settings is a widespread problem affecting hundreds of thousands of people across the country. In 2014, there were 103,024 allegations reported of elderly and disabled persons being abused in Texas, of which 54,731 were confirmed. Elder abuse is grossly underreported because the elderly who are being abused find it very difficult to tell anyone and are usually ashamed and they're usually afraid. Many of the cases investigated by Adult Protective Services in Texas involve self-neglect, and it is our duty as citizens to reach out to the people in need and that we are to take care of. Now, therefore, pursuant to the powers vested in me as your mayor of the city of Corpus Christi, I do hereby humbly proclaim May 2015 as Elder Abuse Prevention Month, and we thank you for your noble work. Uh, my name is Jennifer Catalani, and I work for Adult Protective Services. I'm the Resource and External Relations Specialist for our region. Um, in 2014, in Nueces County, we investigated or completed 1,800 investigations, which is up 300 from the year prior in 2013. Um, of those 1,800, we validated on 1,100 of those cases. Um, so we encourage everyone to report any suspicion of elder or disabled abuse, neglect, or financial exploitation. It is a confidential phone call um, through a 1-800-252-5400. That's our hotline number. Um, so we encourage you all to do that. Elder abuse, as Mayor mentioned um, in the proclamation, is extremely underreported. Estimates show that for every one case we receive, at least 14 go unreported. So again, we empower, want you to empower yourself with information and report any suspicion of abuse, neglect, or exploitation. And I'll get them in. My council is making their way. Small Business Week. The United States Small Business Administration, SBA, it was created in 1953 as an independent agency of the federal government to aid, counsel, assist, and protect the interests of small business concerns to preserve free competitive enterprise, to maintain and strengthen the overall economy of our nation, and to help families and businesses recover from national disasters. During Small Business Week, we recognize the critical impact small business has on both the state of Texas 
and the national economy. Through its resource and lending partners, the SBA has played a critical role in providing the small business community with the financial business development and technical assistance needed to grow and prosper. On Wednesday, May the 13th, 2015, which is tomorrow, the SBA will honor the efforts of our local small business owners, champions, and resource partners, as well as congratulate them on the positive impact that they have had on our local community. Not only in our community, but also within our economy. So now, therefore, pursuant to the powers vested in me as your mayor of the city of Corpus Christi, I do humbly proclaim May the 11th through 15, 2015 as the Corpus Christi Small Business Week in Corpus Christi, Texas. Mayor, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to offer our condolences on our uh, on the loss of your chief uh, for our, from our lo lower Rio Grande Valley District Office. My name is uh, Angela Burton, and I am the newly selected district director for the SBA's lower Rio Grande Valley office. Um, and so today is kind of special for me because it's my first public appearance in Corpus Christi, and Thank it's with you. you. So Thank you. <laughs> what, what was it? Was I supposed to say something no, else? No. Okay. No, okay. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. And, and secondly, um, today is my 50th birthday, so I, uh, I am right in line with the previous uh, proclamation. Uh, last week, the National uh, Small Business Administration celebrated National Small Business Week, and in doing so, officially recognized various uh, lenders and businesses, resource partners located in the city of Corpus Christi. So I'd like to quickly introduce them. We have... Uh, Will Haven from Haven and Associates Insurance. He was the Small Business Person of the Year. Will? <laughs> the Minority uh, Small Business Champion of the Year, Dr. Gilda E. Ramirez, Westside Business Association. <laughs> right there. Uh, Women in Business Champion of the Year, Lorena Parada Valdez, the Language Bridge. So here, okay. <laughs> We have our SBDC Advisor of the Year, James Jones. Uh, we do have Ann here, uh, who is the Executive Director, right? Okay. And we have uh, uh, SCORE Advisor of the Year, Ralph Coker, and he's not here, but we do have SCORE uh, representatives here. Um, our Lender Awards, First Community Bank, well, they're here, he, yes. Yeah. That was uh, for outstanding commitment to SBA lending resulted in the highest volume of 7A loans in 2014. <laughs> American Bank for outstanding commitment to SBA lending resulted in the highest dollar volume of loans supporting 504 loan programs. By the way, uh, for you tourism people, the 504 program is the way to go for our hotels. <laughs> a little and then Capital Certified Development Corporation for outstanding commitment to SBA lending resulting in the highest volume of 504 loans by a community development corporation in 2014. <laughs> um, and then I want to recognize we have SCORE and our SBDC from Del Mar College, and they, they're uh, two of our wonderful resource partners through the SBA. So for the f past 52 years, the President of the United States has issued a proclamation declaring National Snow Business Week to recognize the contribution of Americans entrepreneurs who create nearly two out of every three net new jobs per year. So thank you, Mayor and Council, for recognizing the, small, the role small businesses play as pillars of your community and engines of your growing economy in the city of Corpus Christi. I did it. <laughs> Tomorrow we will have our uh, uh, ceremony, so uh, we will recognize these individuals again. Where is it going to be at? It's at the Omni at 11 to 1, okay. and we're sold out. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> well, that's a wonderful uh, problem to have, and I will tell you that, as everyone knows here in my council team in our city, I understand that small business is truly the backbone of our community where the majority of job growth comes out, where the majority of our tax base is at, and uh, we love our small businesses. Thank you all for all your support. God bless you. Thank you. And congratulations. <laughs>
said Russo, and I said, are you oh. saying Russo or Pixie? Oh. Russo. Oh. Well, Tom said, are you Russo or Pixie? <laughs> he said it in the last one, and I said, are you Russo or Uh, National Children's Mental Health Awareness Week. Ensuring the mental health of our children is essential to their growth and development. According to the United States Department of Health and Human Services, the prevalence of mental health disorders in children and youth to the point of which their life is significantly impacted is estimated to be approximately 20% during a given year. Learning to recognize the early warning signs of mental, mental health problems and where to obtain necessary assistance and treatment, it gives children and adolescents better opportunities to lead full and productive lives. Now, therefore, pursuant to the powers vested in me as your mayor of the city of Corpus Christi, I do hereby humbly proclaim May the 3rd through the 9th, 2015, as National Children's Mental Health Awareness Week, and thank you for all your wonderful work. Hello, good morning or good afternoon already. My name is Martha Garcia. I'm with the Behavioral Health Center of Nueces County. I'm the Mental Health Service Director. This is some of the staff that work with the children's program, the youth services. Uh, we serve over 10,000 uh, individuals on an annual basis, both adult and children. Uh, in the children's services, we served, last year we served 1,042 children and adolescents with emotional and behavioral disorder. Some statistics, one in every five Americans will experience a mental health issue during his or her lifetime. And one in 20 will develop a serious mental health illness. Half of all those cases start by age 14 and three quarters start by the age of 24. We serve uh, all socioeconomic groups and we're there, we do have a crisis line and does somebody have the crisis line off the top of their head, the number? Nicole, do you know? Yes, it's 1-888-767-4494. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is available 24-7, 365 days a week. Behavioral Health Center, bhcnc.org. We also have a new website called Join. You can also access it through the website that's specifically for children and adolescents. Thank you all. And you Thank too. You. Good, right under the Just as soon as everyone congratulates uh, this great group, we have one more uh, honor that we would like to 
present to the mayor, the Texas Association of Mexican American Chambers of Commerce honored the mayor uh, last week as a woman of distinction. So we have our own Hispanic chamber here that would like to present that award uh, for her. She was unable to attend the actual luncheon because um, it was last it was last Friday. So. Well, if I could have my mayor, please write right here. <laughs> anyway, mayor, it is with a great pleasure. I know uh, our family has been a friend of your family for many, many years. We won't say how, how long. You know, I, 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 I'm going to go back and digress a little bit. The mayor actually gets upset with me because her brother Frank, Father Frank, I, 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 we used to work at Wendy's together. <laughs> So she would get up, she would, I would say, how's Frank doing? She said, you mean Father Frank? <laughs> <laughs> but so this is especially personal for me. Um, the Texas Association of Mexican American Chambers of Commerce represents 22 uh, chambers statewide, including our own, obviously, Corpus Christi Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Now, they, um, uh, there is an annual awards banquet for the annual Women of Distinction, of which 12 honorees are chosen throughout the state, 22 chambers roughly 15,000 members, and your Hispanic chamber here nominated our mayor. Uh, one of our recipients for the prior year was Miss Rosie Colleen, but it is with great pleasure that we honor you with this award. It's so well-deserved, and thank you so much for all your service and all that you do for Corpus Christi and the Coastal Bend. Very nice. <laughs> thank you for your leadership. That was very kind of your lovely nomination and the Hispanic Chamber. We're blessed to have all of you all. And um, it means a lot, and I'm very honored and humbled, and we're going to get to work. <laughs> <laughs>